Why, hello there, guys. Um, I'm excited to have you join me here. So today we are talking, going to be talking about parent involvement, which is like such a hot topic, right? And also how to deal with Debbie Downers. Um, again, if you're just seeing a video in this group for the first time, I'm your host in this group, the PTA PTO Superstar Leaders, Christina Heideck. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and today, um, I guess I should say every Wednesday, I pick a different topic to talk about. And um, today, instead of one particular topic, I thought I'd answer like a whole bunch of questions that I've gotten recently in kind of like a mail reader mailbag sort of um, situation. So um, without further ado, why don't I just go ahead and jump right into the questions? So Kareen asks, how do you get your parents vested and involved? Okay, so when I was PTA president, and even now I'm membership chair at two different uh, PTAs, and if you were watching last week, you'll notice that that has changed because I um, went to a PTA meeting on Monday and they didn't have a member membership chair. And I'm like, well, I'll do that because <laughs> I think it's really important to get parents involved because when parents aren't involved, I, involved in schools and they tend not to be uh, or not involved in PTA then they tend not to be involved in schools that's just a a, um, a generality right so I'm just I'm not being specific it's not true in all cases but in a lot of cases it's very true and when they're not involved in the schools a lot of times they will leave for for private schools and uh, my kids go to public schools and I'm I have a vested interest in keeping more people in public schools so anyway that's why I'm membership chair but um, how I get people involved um, is is the first step in getting them vested, right? Because they have to know what what's at stake um, before they can be vested in it, and they have to care about it. But first, you have to get them get them involved. And my number one tip for how to get somebody involved in PTA is just be kind of like goofy, silly, fun, because I think a lot of people, especially of our generation. Um, generation X maybe um, like PTA looked really different for our parents and so maybe we're kind of stuck on some of those same stereotypes or where uh, people who don't who aren't in the know they really think we sit around and talk about for hours like how to plan a bake sale um, none of my PTAs have ever had a bake sale so that stereotype for sure does not hold true um, at least for my groups but a lot of people just think it's like a bunch of women who have nothing better to do with their time than to sit around and plan bake sales, right? But you and I know that that's totally not the case. Like we are not, nobody has a ton of time to waste, right? We do have better things to do and, and we're in this to make the school a better place, to make the teachers happier, to make the kids happier, and ultimately to make us happier, right? Because we're happy when our kids are happy. Um, and so, I like to, to spread that happiness and so I'm when I'm membership chair or even when I'm not because at, at all levels of the PTA and PTO you are a membership like you're in charge of membership because you're supposed to be like recruiting people and showing other people that it's like fun and like worth them being involved in and um, so I would just say make it fun make be approachable you don't always have to be like Susie Sunshine um, but you know, be in a good mood when you're at PTA events or PTO events. Um, make sure you're happy that you're just like plaster on a fake smile. I mean, you have to perfect the, the fake smile thing. Like truly that is a life skill, but that will serve you well. If you are um, just kind of faking it till you make it with that kind of stuff, because as frustrating as it can be to have fewer volunteers than you need for PTO, it can be really bad to have like nobody there. Like that's not good. Like the PTA meeting I went to on Monday, um, seven parents showed up, okay? And this is a brand new PTO or PTA for me because uh, my son is new to the school since he aged up into it. Um, and I was like, okay, I got some work to do as membership chair and just as a general member of this group because I want to see the group suc to succeed. So. How do I get people to come? I joke with them. Um, I have joked on an occasion that, because I'll say, you know, it's not your, not your mother's PTA. It's not your mother's PTO. Um, you know, we don't do bake sales, but we do do monthly blood draws, so be prepared for that. And people, their heads usually like 
snap, or their next snap over. And they're like, really? And I'm like, okay, I was kind of joking about that. No, real joking about it. But like that gets people's attention um, because then they're like, wait, this chick is kind of crazy, but kind of fun, right? Isn't that sort of endearing? Just slightly, come on, admit it, it's kind of funny. If someone said that to you, you'd be totally be cracking up. Um, but it shows you that it's not all like business and that it is fun. Um, I also have been known to bribe people. I'll be like, come on, you need to come. There will be cookies there. Um, again, with the chocolate, like um, that's always a good thing. Uh, so that's how I get parents involved. And I also, most of all, I ask them. Like I've talked about this in my blog post about the importance of just asking. A lot of people won't do things unless you ask them. So you, I know that when you're busy planning an event, you just are like worried about the small little details of the who, what, where, why, and how, but you really need to spend a little bit more time on the who. Um, and if you don't have time to personally invite people, get somebody who's enthusiastic and who's an extrovert. You know, they don't have to be quite as extroverted as me. I know I'm like one in a million with this kind of nonsense, but um, yeah, find somebody who's like really engaging and charismatic and have them reach out to people. Because when you have that kind of positive energy, Others are going to be attracted to it, and they're going to come join you. Um, and in fact, not to toot my own horn, but I'm totally going to do it. Um, there are several people at the PTA that I just like graduated from. My kids like aged out of that school. They're like, we never would have gotten involved unless if it weren't for Christina. Like Christina is the reason that I'm here, and Christina is the reason that I stayed. So in your group, find your own Christina. Okay, that person that can be charismatic and engaging, that really reaches out to parents and talks to them, maybe when you don't need something. Like that's another big hint. Like talk to people when you don't need something so that people won't go hiding from you. Um, so Karina, I hope that, that answers your question. Um, the next question is from Nicole and she asked, how can we get more out of our community? More money, more donations, volunteers, activities and programs? Okay, well I also wrote a blog post about this and maybe what I'll do is in the, um, like after I'm done, I'll drop links to all of the relevant blog posts. Cause these are really, the reason I chose these questions and the reason I wrote the blog post is that these are kind of universal issues that every PTO has probably experienced at one point in time or another. So I thought that I would get like the biggest bang for the buck as far as bring this value to you guys so that you actually have the information that you need. Because although it is really fun to watch um, videos of, what did I watch this morning? Jake Gyllenhaal and um, who's the other cute patootie? Ryan Reynolds. They were reading um, like Google autofills. It was hilarious, but I don't always have time for that and I know you don't either. So you're coming here for some true value. So I'm going to give it to you so that it can make your life easier. All right, so Nicole, um, you have to start off by asking. You need to get um, a donation letter set up and then you need to think about the community organizations and businesses in your area that you should target. Like make sure that their missions are aligned with yours. So like don't go to, for example, a bar. Like maybe that's not somebody that you want to be promoting your group or your events or that you, you want to promote because a lot of times that's what PTOs have to offer in return for um, I'll just call them corporate or business donations is that you're going to be promoting them well you're probably not going to want to promote products that kids and families won't use possibly together because that would be a way to get you in hot water so I would stick with like chocolate shops uh, local pizza places local churches um, synagogues and other houses of worship are great because a lot of those um, religious organizations have a community and mission um, aspect to their ministry and so that's like a really good one to tap into um, I have more suggestions again in this blog post and I think it's the blog post um, is called oh, I can't even remember because I'm really tired um I think like the one thing that you're missing or the one Something like that. Anyway, I'll, I'll drop it in the in the post. Um, but um, Nicole, you really just have to ask. And I think you have to be clear on what you're asking for and why you're asking for it. And all of that information needs to be relayed in that letter. You just can't put 
in the letter like, hi, I'm Bluestone, you know, I'm, I'm Christina Heideck from Bluestone PTO and, um, you know, we'd like, we'd like your money. Like no one's going to respond to that. You need to be like, hi, I'm Christina from Bluestone PTO and we have 175 students at our K through three building. You know, 50% of them are free and reduced lunch, um, meaning that they have, you know, families of low economic means and that we are raising money to get new playground equipment. Would you be interested in supporting this effort? Like that is super clear. The business knows exactly why they need to be doing it, exactly what it's going to and what they're getting out of it. Now, um, the one way that I will say that you need to really make sure that you are getting um, a response from these letters is either deliver them in person or if you just if you only have time to like send them out or mail them off or mail them out rather, make sure you're following up within two weeks. Um, I think that's where a lot of things are, are kind of just fall off. Like you, I think it'll just be a lot more effective if you follow up and say, Hey, Mr. Pizza, Mr. Pizza, Fran Pizza franchise owner, if I can talk correctly today. Um, we sent you this letter, you know, Bluestone PTO sent you this letter about the playground fundraiser we're, we're having. Um, can I count on your support? Like how I would love to get you, we'd love to have a partnership with you. Like how can we make this happen? Be just like really specific and relate to them on a personal level. And I think that you will get far more out of local businesses than you will from like big national chains, right? Because like everybody and their mother is trying to get an American girl doll. Well, have you tried your like local toy store? Like I know there's a couple in the Cleveland area that yeah, we still do actually have local toy stores. <laughs> They're not many, but we have them and I've actually never gone to them, but that gives me a thought that I could totally go to them and ask. Um, so I, I hope that that helps you, Nicole. Okay, the next question from Chelsea is, how do you effectively coordinate with staff to make your events run smoothly? Okay, for this one, it all goes back to communication. Like you gotta have a plan and you gotta effectively, I shouldn't use that word because she used that in the question. That is bad, but that's lawyer. That's my lawyer, lawyering where I use the same words and you mimic it back. But um, you have to communicate your plan clearly to staff. They are busy. And you have to remember, this is work for them. Like this is, this is more on the fun side for you because you're volunteering, but teachers and, and school staff, this is work for them. So they are not eating, breathing, and sleeping, you know. My fictitious PTO that I kind of made up is Bluestone PTO, so I always have a name. So they're not e eating, breathing, and drinking Bluestone PTO stuff um, or the Kool-Aid, like at all. So you're gonna need to go out of your way to make sure that they have all the dates. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that groups make is just kind of trying to wing, wing it and they're, they don't generate like a year long calendar at the get go. And they're just like, mm, it's October. So like maybe we should do something for Halloween. What do you think we should do? Oh, we should do a trunk or treat. Oh, and then, then you put, put that plan together two weeks before Halloween and you find that turnout is low. Well, because nobody knew about it and the teachers don't even have a chance to promote it because they don't know about it. But if you tell them all in, in advance and you ask for their help in promoting the events um, and specifically give them ideas like, can you include this in their planners or your classroom newsletter or on your classroom website? Or can you send home a class dojo message about it or a remind message about it? Um, either at the classroom level or at the school level with your principal or your office administrator, like that's where I would go to make sure that that communication is happening. Okay, next up is Brittany and she asks, how can you get others on board with new ideas instead of repeating the same old tired ideas? How can you shake things up without shaking people's comfort levels? All right, Brittany, I would say don't, I am not exactly one known to um, not be like an elephant in a, or a bull in a china shop. Um, like I try my best to reel it in, but sometimes people need to be shaken up. And for the most part with PTO stuff, there's um, like a fair amount of shaking that you could do just because you're the one who's volunteering. You're the one giving of your time. So you really, 
can be like, you want to help out and do it? No, no, I don't hear, I don't hear anything. Okay, fine. Then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and do it. Um, one example I have of a time when I did this and it was at first a little, eh, and then it turned out all right was, um, carnival when I was president at the K through three building in my district or one of the K through three buildings in the district. Um, every year we have a carnival and it's a fun and a fundraiser. And this particular year, well, I guess it was my first year as being president and the president's always like the head of the carnival committee. And when I looked at the numbers and saw that they were only raising $500 a year, I was like, mm, I, I still don't have time for that. Like I'd almost write a, rather write a check than just put all of this time and effort into playing this carnival and only earning $500. Because this was like a multi-month process. And it involved how they got the, the items for the, um, the raffles where they were like just kind of what I said in my response to um, uh, Nicole was that we would, we had a donation letter and we'd send it out to different, you know, community businesses. And we're in the Cleveland area, so we have a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of businesses to choose from, but we would specifically target the ones in our community to let the schools in our, in our the other schools in the district target their, like local peoples. Um, it was all very strategic, meant not to step on other schools' toes. <laughs> um, but when I saw that we were only raising five hundred dollars, I was like, n n n "No!" <laughs> and so I said, "You know what? We're going to switch formats." And I would—I had a co-chair, and she happens to be a sorority sister of mine. Like we met before we had kids, and then we both ended up in the same school district and at the same school, which was like really awesome. And she's not someone that I went to school with, but like we were both involved in the same alumni chapter. And um, I remember she was mad at me for a little bit when I made this change because it had always been done as a Chinese raffle. And if you know what a Chinese, or if you don't know what a Chinese raffle is, that's when you can buy like a ticket. How, we, how they had it set up was you could buy um, a ticket for like a dollar or like, you know, five for four dollars or some nonsense like that and you would put a, a ticket into every every little we had like Chinese takeout boxes and so they would spend a whole bunch of time putting these baskets together of like all of the little donated area donated items and there were so that the baskets would reach like a certain value but people were spending like only a dollar to to get it and instead of um, and, and the prizes were worth like hundreds of dollars. So they, um, what was I going to say? I'm sorry. I just got a text. It was very dis distracting. Um, so one of the prizes, for example, was a pool pass. It's a family pool pass and it was worth like almost $200. Well, families are probably going to buy a pool pass anyway. And so I was like, instead of them being able to get it for a dollar, which they're going to buy it anyway, because they want to go to the pool during the summer. I was like, let's switch it to a silent auction and we'll see what we get for things. So again, my friend was like, not very happy with me, but I just was like, sorry, like, cause I'm in charge and this is what I think is the best decision for the group. And so, um, we went forward I didn't talk to my friend, as much as I had, like I could totally tell she was irked with me, but um, I just, I knew this was the right decision and we went from making only $500 to $2,500 with that one change. Like, wow, $2,500, now we are talking. Now that is totally worth it, but for $500, no. And by the by, I'm totally fine with, with my friend. In fact, she, um, I stayed with her and talked for like an hour and a half after Monday's PTA meeting. So she got over being irritated with me because I think she saw I was right in the end. So that's all to say, don't be afraid to shake things up, but like do it smartly and do it when it like counts. Like that was a big win, right? Going from $500 to $2,500 with that one little change. Like that's stinking awesome. So I will have you know that we have not done a Chinese raffle ever since. And, um, Yes, some people were very hesitant, and yes, it was a big change, but uh, nobody is crying about it now because we were making so much money. So, really awesome. Okay, and the last one is from, last question is from Leslie. And she was like, okay, I'm just going to put this out here. But how do you deal with that parent volunteer who is a constant sourpuss? She says, right now I practice that kill him with 
Kill Him With Kindness school of thought. Any advice on that? Okay, so um, my advice depends on whether this Susie Sourpuss or Debbie Downer is like driving people away from your group. Um, if she is driving people away from a, your group, then you have two choices. You can talk with her and be like, lady, what is up? I mean, maybe something's going on with her. Maybe she's just like always sees the negative part. Um, so you can have a private conversation with her or you can just continue to put out that goodness and that kindness and hopefully eventually she'll catch a clue. If she doesn't catch a clue, then she'll probably leave the group and, and that'll probably, that might be the best thing for your group. Um, but there's really, those are your two, you know, only two options. But for what I would do, I would continue to be positive. And then if it was someone that I think that like, maybe she just feels excluded or something for a reason. Like I might, depending on who, who Susie was and whether or not I could truly be friends with her, um, my um, solution for dealing with people like that is always to befriend them and just bring them in a little bit closer. You know, it's kind of that, you know, keep your, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Like, and not so much that they're an enemy, but just like they might need a little extra attention. And I advise um, a collegiate sorority group as well. And that's my tactic with these ladies that like someone, um, you know, in the past we've had someone who like just didn't really click with all the group. And they're like, she just is a little weird and just a little off. And, um, you know, like we don't know what to do with her. And I was like, okay, well then we need to give her a position and give her something to do and give her a reason to talk with an advisor. So I, I would maybe do the same with um, your Susie Sourpuss. Um, Leslie and and make it so that you had more of a reason to talk with Susie and that you could kind of model and model the behavior that you want and the model the attitude that you want and also um, coach her a little bit because she she might just need that uh, maybe she's insecure um, or she could just be someone that complains about everything but that kind of misery needs to leave because that's just like negative but I wouldn't like boot her out I would just like continue with the uh, positive attitude um, and maybe in that case like if she's there just start every event with like an inspirational or motivational quote and just be like before I just we just want to gather on up I'll get on the same page thank you so much all for coming and um, I can't think of a good quote off the top of my head I'm sure there's one out there I know I've used in the past about like a tree with no leaves provides no shade or something like that. So yeah, that's kind of cheesy, but like cheddar it up. It totally might work with Susie. You never know. So, all right. So my, I'm about to start coughing because my throat is getting really sore. So I need to hop off. Um, but this was fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. I see that several people stayed on. Um, I hope that it was the same people for the whole time and just not constant switching. But, um, I hope it was such goodness and I want to do this again. So in a couple weeks, maybe I'll, I'll ask for some more questions. In the meantime, if you have an idea for next week's live, a topic that you want me to cover, go ahead and pop it in the comments here. Um, and the, and the other thing that I wanted to say is that today is what the 13th. Yeah. Do you know what happens in two days, two days on September 15th? It's the monthly draw drawing for the giveaway that I do every month. And um, so you have a chance to win this, this, the prize, the monthly prize. Um, and at the moment, I'm such a dork. I totally forget what the prize is, but it's something good because it always is. Like you can look around. I always give away something really good. It's one of my products that's available in my Etsy store or on my website. Same products, just different different places um but I always give away something really good and really valuable for you guys but I do the drawing on um I take everybody who subscribed to the mailing like my email list and I email people just like maybe once a week I'm actually really bad about it um I'm trying to get better because I again would love to give you advice like straight into your inbox um but you can get on that giveaway list by going to bit.ly forward slash PTO giveaway. 
And if that's not the right one, I'll put the right one in the comments. Because again, I was up last night. Actually, I haven't shared this with you. I was up last night and could not sleep for like two hours uh, in the middle of the night because I woke up because I legit was dreaming that there was a box of kittens on the highway about to be run over. Is that horrible? Oh, so horrible. So it woke me up. I can't believe I just shared that, but I'm only human. So that is what keeps me up at night is kittens. <laughs> so anyway, I'm a little tired. I'm a little loopy. So I'm going to go because you're done with this craziness. So anyway, go sign up for the giveaway. I promise it's something awesome. And I will pick a winner on September 16th. And I will let you guys know right about then. So go ahead, sign up for it so you can be eligible. And have a good rest of your day. And I'll be right here back at you real soon. Bye-bye.